Hello, friends, and welcome to Service of Change's Change Cast, your podcast for change. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II, with Service of Change, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. Tonight, we have the talented musician, also known as my brother, Michael Nappy of Nappy Music and Nappy Beats. He's going to be uh, discussing a well, his new free Christmas album that he put out for the holidays, and... <laughs> Hang on one second. I'm having a technical difficulty right here. There we go. Sorry, I had something playing in the background. Totally threw me off. But we're excited to have Michael on the show this evening and uh, and talking about this new album. But before we get into that, let me bring on my esteemed co-host, my partner in crime, Joel the Provocateur Schaefer. Joel, what is going on, dude? I'm doing well. How are you? You know, it's been a uh, it's been a stressful evening, I, I guess I should say. Uh, you know, as demonstrated in the last 30 seconds, I have um, our link. We're, you know, since we're live right now, you can get it through a variety of ways. You can get it from Google, you can get it from YouTube, and get it at servicetochange.com. And I have the servicetochange.com feed open just to see how things are going, and I forgot, and the feed just started playing in my ear, and it totally threw me off as I was going on my little spiel about my brother coming on the show tonight, but. Uh, just a rough, rough evening, man. I um, I was down in Exton today doing some training for work, and when we got kicked out, I jumped on 76, and I don't know what I was thinking, man. I went west instead of east, and didn't, dude. I didn't realize it until I was in Harrisburg, so I wow. was just, I was just in a zone. So I get to Harrisburg, and I'm, I'm cursing, I'm pissed off, but I'm, okay. So I hop on 81. I'm taking 81 north. And I missed my turn again, and I ended up in Wilkesbury. Add another like 40 minutes to my drive. So what should have been two hours was like a four-hour drive today, man. Just freaking horrible. And I came home, and you know my son's all wound up for Christmas, so he's been throwing a couple temper tantrums. <laughs> you know, good times. You can but, always start your day over. I've yeah, been told. yeah. You you know, I mean, overall things are good. I'm happy to be doing the show. You know, it was great coming home. Uh, you know, to see my wife. She is. So amazing, just getting everything ready for Christmas. She's decorating like crazy. She gave me an early Christmas present tonight, which I cannot reveal what it is because I don't want to spoil it when my brother sees it. And since he's on the show tonight and my mom's probably listening or going to be tuning in soon, uh, I won't spill the beans. But uh, Jenny, I love you. Thank you so much. Uh, you really surprised me tonight. And I You'll have to tell us it. about it next week. I will. I will. Once uh, Once everybody's aware of what it is, I will pass it on. So... But uh, let's see, where was I going with this? So let's get started here, and uh, I don't know, well, anything else to cover, cover Joel? Anything uh, going, I mean, it's been, what, two weeks since we've been on the air? Yeah, I'm Live just excited least? to be back uh, in the swing of things, and I'm yeah, excited I to, to meet your brother in, in real life, well, real or re more real life than Facebook. Yeah, virtual hear life. His, uh, hear about what he's doing to make small changes, and how he's using his art to you know, brighten people's lives and educate them and all that good stuff. Yeah, he's doing a lot of good things, and, you know, that's what we love at, at Service of Change. It's a, it's a nice change of pace from just all the negative drama that's going on out there in the world. You know, I, I wanted to get on right after the Ferguson decision. You know, I, I did a um, I did my own, like, four-minute, I, I guess I'll call it a rant, but, you know, really just trying to say we got to do something different. I'm not going to digress into that direction tonight, but, you know, we try to bring that positive and that, you know, don't get involved in all that drama. Do something different. Do something good. Do something productive and constructive. You don't have to fight the system. Just do something differently. And that's what we're trying to promote here at Service to Change. So I hope this show, once you listen to uh, my brother's journey, because his, his journey as a musician has been um, unconventional and I think inspiring for his love of music. So uh, I hope that our listeners can take that away from it. Exactly. So what do you think? You ready to bring him on? Let's do it. All right. So... Again, I'm I'm just so honored to have my brother on the air with us tonight and talking about his album and you know I hope he gets into a little bit about his his musical journey and, and some of the things that he's been a part of for the town of Westchester. Um, he's got a lot of good projects going on uh, out there in Westchester, but he's released a Christmas album called Nappy Holidays and it's a free download from nappymusic.com. I'm just going to read part of his press release. He's got a pretty awesome press release. Uh, it says, from Westchester, PA, musician and producer Mike Nappy teams up with his longtime music partner and legendary WC lyricist Tamara Sadiq, as well as a cast of many other talented local Westchester artists, to put together a Christmas album for the tastes, ears, minds, and souls of 2014, but also for the ages. 
blending modern rhythms and sounds with some of the classic holiday go-tos of years gone by, Nappy Holidays is sure to have something for everyone and every musical taste. When you put it on, it will give you that going to grandma's in the back of the station wagon or standing in line to see Santa at the mall feeling. Our nation's troops, who are often away from their families, get a touching tribute featuring clips from interviews of soldiers past and present with personal accounts of their holidays away from home. Mike also transforms the holiday classic Elf, made popular by Will Ferrell, into his own personal holiday story that gives you the warm holiday feeling and takes you to an audio holiday journey. There are many of these memorable moments on Nappy Holidays, and each song fits just right in its place on the track list, but can also stand on its own telling its unique story. And this is a fantastic, fantastic uh, album. My, you know, Mike came up and sampled it for us this weekend. So, Mike, your, your microphone is active. Uh, welcome to the show, brother. How are you tonight, dude? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, man. Been wanting to get you on the show since we started doing these podcasts. So, uh, you know, I'm been sorry wanting to get so on. Thank yeah, you. Thank yeah, yeah. But uh, so so good stuff, man. So so nappy holidays. How how's the album going for you right now, Mike? How are the downloads going? Uh, downloads are okay, averaging about um a, a huge fourteen a day. Wow. Um, but they're they're um they're getting the stamp of approval by all. On my mentors, and that's all I was really going for. Um, I I come from a lineage of music industry that breed in independent people that only put out music of substance, and um, they are telling me that I did a good job, and so I feel like it's a successful project. I, I think so too, Michael. And sometimes it just takes a little bit for people to catch on, and especially. And I'm not saying it because I I got. Uh, you know, I know somebody in the Soldiers tribute that you did. I'm not saying it because of that, but I really think that that, um, in particular, pulls on so many heartstrings that it has the potential to go viral. You know, so if anybody's listening to that, if you enjoy it and if you respect it for for what I think Michael's message was, please share it. Share it with as many people as you can because it it's a he, he spent. Well, why don't you tell us, Mike? I'm sitting here telling your story. On my my apologies. Tell us about the creation of this album. Tell us, you know, first of all, what was your inspiration for deciding to do this album? My inspiration, um, the audio was Did getting a little disrupted. Uh, yep, all right. We're um, can you still hear me? Yeah, I got you, dude. And that's the that's the challenge with using uh, free Google software. We uh, we sometimes lose audio and it breaks up. So, Mike, are you still with us? I'm here. I was able to piece together what you said. If if you're able to hear me, I can yeah. answer. Loud and clear, brother. My apologies for that. So yeah, why don't you just start off telling us what was your inspiration for doing this uh, this album? Uh, my inspiration um, it really began with uh, a seven year foundation of working in a studio without exposing any music with my partner Tamara. Um, before I continue, my other music partner uh, McKinley Burrell. He's the one who wrote that press release. He uh, is responsible for doing a lot of the things for nappy music and L legend legacy entertainment that that often might not get light shine on his name. So I just want to thank him for writing up that press release. Yeah, he did a good job. Um, so the inspiration basically comes from um, utilizing current events and our skills with music to um, to to deliver an emotion for free because too many things around the holidays require money and we've reached a point with our music where we We're we're really struggling with your connection there, Mike. It's you're fading you're fading in and out for us, but Michael was basically saying that uh you know, too many things around the holidays require money, and uh, you know they've reached a point with their music. Uh, I didn't catch the rest of that, but they they're giving this album away for free. And to those that are out there listening, I, I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, checking it out at nappymusic.com. Mike, are you still with us? My my deepest apologies for this. It's okay. I'm sorry. Um, we're having some trouble. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, loud and clear. Um, yeah, you summed it up. We basically just want to give out free music to the people, and we didn't want to disrespect the hip hop culture so we kept it authentic with the beats and with the lyricism and with the message 
Now you had a lot. You, you incorporated a lot of uh, Christmas movies into there, right? What was your inspiration for doing that? What was your reason for doing the you know the old time Christmas Christmas movies? Um, well, our <clears throat> like I had said, our goal was to bring the authentic core of hip hop into Christmas. <clears throat> so once we sh were able to maintain the the core of the the way the instrumentals were set up and to make sure there was proper lyricism there, then we were able to get have fun. <clears throat> and choose the movies that we all had the most fun with as kids to really create that memory. Uh, and with with that formula, we were really able to capture something special because um, we we didn't have to uh, compromise on good music or for the for a couple good extra sounds. You know, we we really did well on both ends. Now, and I think it's important to note, you know, to our listeners out there, and we have one viewer right now. Thank you so much for tuning in, whoever that is. We greatly appreciate it. Um, but, you know, to, to anybody that listens to that, you know, and says, oh, I don't listen to hip-hop, I don't listen to rap, you know, I, I encourage you, listen listen to the album, listen, you know, to the to the song, uh, Candles in the Window, which is a tribute to soldiers, and um, you're going to find that it's got some smooth hip-hop beats to it, but you're going to... Because he incorporated those familiar sounds of the holidays, based on a lot of the Christmas specials that we've watched, all we've watched growing up, you're going to be able to relate to it. It's going to bring back memories. So, um, you know, this is really, I would say, an album for just about everybody that they can listen to it and they uh, they can enjoy it. Definitely, uh, well worth a shot. Agreed. Especially, I always like to say when to those that are not interested in listening to hip hop, um, it is just currently right now the most uh, it, it's no different than if you do your history of American music it's no different than rock and roll or jazz and it's no different than blues um, the history of American music has started with slave chants and then from there it has branched off to blues, gospel jazz, funk rock, rock and roll, rockabilly and has reached hip hop and every generation always has a large percentage of people that do not like the most current type of music and whenever I hear about people like that I always encourage them to do their history on American music because whether you like it or not right now if you have an important message you may want to consider learning hip-hop well and that's that's the neat thing about hip-hop and Joel maybe you can speak to this too I know I know uh, you know you're in the rap game as well um, you know when you really listen to the lyrics you know especially you know I'm gonna shout out to the 90s and stuff but there's a story that's being told there, and some of that got corrupted, I think, with with some of the gangster rap. It, it you know, it kind of went in a different direction. But there's a lot of artists out there who were just telling a story, trying to let people know, hey, this is a real problem. This is what's going on. This is what the struggle is all about. You know? Well, there's a reason. There's a reason why that corruption happened with the gangster rap. Uh, in the '90s, you had rappers like KRS-One, Rakim, uh, Big Daddy Kane, and they were sp speaking to their communities and empowering them and uh, the powers that be do not want uh, people to ha spread that message to the masses, so they infiltrated it with a created genre of music called gangster rap, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is which uh, is unfortunate. Go ahead, Joel. I I, I have a, a a slightly different perspective on it, but I think it's interesting. Um, I was talking to my mom about about some of the issues, like the black and white issues that are going on in light of like the Ferguson and now the uh, the Garner case and. I grew up in the 90s, and I liked some of the New York. I didn't really like the, the West Coast gangster rap, like NWA, because it was just so over the top and just so violent, and I just I didn't like it. But I liked some of the New York, like, thug rap, like Mob Deep and Nas and, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, some other people. And uh, what I noticed with them, and even Wu-Tang, is that they they injected into the into the ambiance into the atmosphere of the music and into the, into the storytelling they they injected this thing called pathos now pathos is a greek word and has to do with we get our words like pathology from it but pathos is sort of like it's like emotion often refers to sadness and so when they told tales about selling drugs and and even like shooting at their rivals or getting into gun battles or people dying there was a sense of darkness about it that they didn't feel like they weren't necessarily embracing the darkness. There was some ambivalence there. Like Tupac in this song called Shorty Wanna Be a Thug. Yeah. That's a blues song. In other words, like he's singing the blues about somebody who's 16 years old and and and, and he's already acting like a man. Like he's grown mm -hmm. up beyond his years and he's embraced this lifestyle. And Tupac isn't necessarily glorifying it. He's like, you know what? I don't know about this. But this is the way it is. Whereas 
you listen to like what one of the most popular songs right now is Bobby Shmurda. And Bobby Shmurda is talking about catching a body last week to a dance song. So it's so far removed. Right. He's talking about killing somebody last week, and people are dancing around. There's no context and that, and to that the violence. There's right. no context that, to that violence. It's amoral. In other words, he's just totally removed from the fact that like, he's talking about killing people. There's no re Why did you kill him? Did you have yep. to kill him? You know what I mean? Like there's, it, And it's just everybody thinks it's fun. People like, Mike, I know you're trying to come through. Your microphone, your microphone went yeah, down. Yeah, I think they're putting. Go ahead. The, you're good. The powers that be are trying to silence you, Mike. The radio never put my. Yeah, probably. The, the, <laughs> they're trying the to radio silence never put... you. Don't let them. <laughs> The, I, the radio never put Mob Deep on the radio like they're putting Bobby Schmurder on the radio. That's though. true. That's a good point. That's, you know, that's the difference because Mob Deep was speaking truth. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I, I feel like they exploit this stuff that is untrue, and um, and not only that, but then they end up victimizing these young artists by giving them fame. Yeah. You know, and Joel, just to piggyback on what you're saying, I don't, I don't think your opinion was that different from kind of where we were going. I mean, Tupac, you know, I, I always say Tupac saved me as a teacher. You know, when you like, I was watching the, the documentary on him, and he flat out said, he says, you know, people look at thugs and say, oh, a thug's a gangster, a thug's, you know, out there causing trouble. He says, no, a thug's a kid in the struggle. A thug's the one that's that go, is going through the hardship. And he says, and that's who I'm writing my music for. When that one kid who's going through it listens to it and says, yeah, I understand. Okay, I'm not alone. He says, I just reached that kid. He says, the other kids out there who who want to be a gangster and glorify it, that's just a fad. That won't last. But if I reach that one kid, then I've done my job. You know, so that that's not the the you know when I'm when I'm referring to like you know I guess the the criminalization of the of the music and, the, and you know kind of putting it in a negative light. Now Tupac was telling a story, you know, and I, I strongly believe that. Well, his whole yeah. life his whole life was uh, there was different things going on with his life because ultimately he did get consumed by that that an yeah, element of that thumb culture. He was killed in the streets, living in. the street life, but. He was also he grew up and went he, he grew up in some better neighborhoods and was went to a performing arts school and and, right. and he had different relationships with different cultures and so he was a, a a multifaceted person like a fascinating historical figure and a lot of people have said if he had survived maybe if he had survived we could have a leader or someone similar to him that could bridge these gaps between the white and the black culture that are now like threatening to consume us. And I want to step in real quick, Joel, because we can easily go on this all night long, but we're time is ticking away quick and I want to come bring it back to my brother. Uh, you know, and, and talk more about what you know what he's Absolutely. going on. You know, because we could always go on and on about this stuff because it's so fascinating and so important. So, Mike, um, if you know, let's go. Let's go back to your album. Let's talk about you know the song that you know we're going to play for our listeners in a little bit uh, called "Candles in the Window." So, why don't you tell us? You know, what's what's the theme of this song and, and, and how'd you go about putting it together? Uh, this song samples John Williams' great composition home, of "Home Alone 2's theme song called "Candles in the Window." John Williams has composed more theme songs for classic films than you can imagine. He's one of my favorite composers. Um, so as I was <coughs> developing this song, the idea came to me that the people that feel the most alone around the holidays are generally those, in my opinion, that are away from their families, and then more specifically those that are usually serving the country as I related to you, my brother, who was away and feeling lonely during the holidays. So I decided to ask some of my friends that have served during the holidays, Tom DeVitro, Kira McGurk, and you, and I also got a clip from CNN from a Lieutenant Colonel Kimberly North who talked about the loss of her father, which I think is important to mention, although I didn't, never met her in person. So with these interviews, I put them into a song along with my lyrics to describe from the perspective of both the soldiers and the family members of the hardships that we go through when our loved ones are away serving and when our loved ones are away serving during the holidays. And I tried to make the song uh, relatable to everyone despite what your views are on war and uh, the decisions of our, you know, our country to send troops to different places. I tried to focus just on missing the people we love. And I think you, you strongly captured that, Michael. Um, you, you know, and it's so powerful hearing what these soldiers have to say. Uh, you know, and, and if you're ready, we can play it for our listeners right now. 
so they can uh, you know get just get a feel for it. And, and I want to just put the I guess the caveat in there that this um, recording of it, since we're still trying to figure out our new format in Google Hangouts. Michael's just playing it in the background. It's still pretty clear, but it's not the best audio quality that you'll get when you go and, and get your free download. Where can I get that free download, by the way, Mike? Uh, nap nappymusic.com, N-A-P-P-I music.com. Oh, they know how to spell nappy. I'm always uh, plugging my last name with my Twitter account. Speaking of which, uh, you know, in, in the meantime, also check us out at servicetochange.com and uh, follow me on Twitter, Dennis Nappy the second, N A P P I I I, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash service to change, and continue to support the show. And you can get great updates and stuff like that. I'm doing a live uh, Twitter feed right now. And also, if you're through the Google Hangout, you can ask questions or, or give comments. You know, we're getting ready to play Michael's song. Uh, so please give us your comments and uh, and questions for Michael, and we'll be happy to uh, you know to read them off to Michael and have him answer them for you, and uh, you know just kind of enjoy this uh, this song that he put together. It's a really beautiful tribute. So Mike, if you're ready for it, you know we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, play it for everybody. Cool. Here we go. This song is called Candles in the Window, um, recorded here at Nappy Studios of U.S. soldiers attend a Christmas celebration at the Balad military base in northern Baghdad, the final Christmas before all the U.S. troops are expected to leave Iraq by the end of next year. Um, you know, when you ask somebody who wanted to then to fight, um, you're asking them to do something very capitalistic. There, there's nothing human in it. There's no like, human trait at work. It's capitalistic. It's different. When you ask someone to act like a capital, it's regarding, you know, like, that's just telling you, it's regarding, you know, like, it's to take away a soul. Like, you know? Um, and then you, you expect them to come back and shut that off. Nobody's going to understand. Nobody's going to understand unless they did it for U.S. troops celebrate Christmas in Iraq. What will we see next in this battle against ISIS? I think we see a gradual increase in American presence there. I've used the number three to five thousand by Christmas. Uh, on the ground. And Some soldiers welcome the chance to spend time with each other. I guess it was a lonely time, but at the same time, you know, I had my buddies in you know, with me there, and, you know, and, uh, and that, that made all the difference. Christmas is challenging for me, personally, because my father died on Christmas Eve the last time I was deployed. This is one time of year you don't want to be alone. So if you can't be with your family, be with the family that you have chosen. You know, I don't think soldiers To let our first born sign a dotted line at 17, but what was worse for them would be to not support them. We went to family forums, learned that all the members are affected from our spot in Mormon, even the middle brother. With the new father, mother didn't realize at night what they wondered in bed under covers. Will they see him again overseas in the bed? While he sees our visions of MREs dancing in his head. That goes for all the soldiers, for all that's on their shoulders, for all the stress he held to himself until I was older. Take a candle and put it in your window for all the fireplaces this Christmas dismantle the widows. Show them some light at night when the wind blows. Be the pain, the plain symbolizes all you can be if you get home. I believe I'm myself. And I sat on my video camera and I filmed myself opening my present. And, uh, you know, I, I got all these beautiful candles and I'm just sitting there and I'm Sorry, Mr. Nappy, I cannot bring the soldiers home. I cannot bring you joy. Now, before you 
get too angry, think about all those deployed. I cannot bring up anything. Happiness is a choice. Together is what heals the void inside me. All the void. I'm being deployed, but you know, at least when I was deployed, I was I had the time and the safety to sit down in my presence. I'm fortunate for that. There's some soldiers who are grabbing their rifles and firing shots down range. Yeah, like 45 minutes before we go, uh, we're going to, because there is like an ID like a mile away from our base. So on our way there, we get hit by an ID. So like the vehicle behind, no one was hurt, but like our ears were all good. So blew up our vehicle. So like we had to wait there for like an hour and a half for it. One of the other convoys to come, we took our vehicle back and we just continued on with our mission. This is like an hour and a half later. So we didn't get back to our base till like three hours later, and of course, all the, all the food's gone. If we don't have people to volunteer in our country or in other countries, um, and tyrants and the police of the world, uh, you know, will take over the world. And even if it's one alive law, that's one alive too many. There's never, ever any winners. Everyone will lose it, but there's just a side that loses more and more. You know, I I didn't cry this time <laughs> when I listened to it, but Mike brought that up, up and and uh, had the big you know um with, on for uh you know for us on, over the Thanksgiving weekend and uh, we were all tearing up listening to it, uh you know especially that that final uh, statement is so insightful and so wise you know there are no winners, um and everybody loses one side just loses more that really. And, it's hard, man. That 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 really hits hard. So congratulations, Michael. I think that's a that's a beautiful song. Again, I know you, you know I feel that way, but it's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, that <clears throat> that last quote was Tom DeVitro. He uh he's a veteran. He he owns two CrossFits in Delaware County. He's uh he helps others. He uh, to paraphrase him, he says one of his ways he battles against the system is by helping people battle against obesity. So. He now uses all of his energy into getting people fit to battle against, you know, all the nutritional poisons, which I know you guys have talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, and and you, who everyone knows about you at this point, but you know, I and Kieran McGurk is the other veteran who, um, when when he first got back home, he told me he bought a house near uh, where the majority of his friends were that were injured from war, and he helped take care of them and assimilate them back into their new unfortunate lifestyles so everyone involved in this project is, is doing some mega things so it was quite an honor to to do this song um, and there's no money made from it I'm not doing it to be famous you know I, I, I would just like the song to be spread yeah it's got a, such a such a strong powerful message and I think any soldier that's that's been deployed can can relate to it and can appreciate it because it's it's the voice of soldiers and I think that's what's so great about what you did you know I think it's a very humble thing for you to you know, it, it it's a song that you prepared, but the voice really goes to them. You know, you're, you're kind of the background to highlight those voices of those soldiers. Uh, you know, especially that one soldier. I'm going to say sounded really familiar. In yeah, there. He, he sounded like a pretty awesome guy. I'm just going to yeah. throw that out there. You know, he was. He taught me how to spell my name. <laughs> Way back when you were like three years old. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure our listeners. What I, Go ahead, Joel. What I heard from the song was. Uh, an interesting like contrast between like the experiences of war that are like so sobering and then you have the like Christmas in a lot of ways is is about innocence I mean it's about, often about children and it often involves the story of a, of a, of a baby being born who becomes Jesus mm -hmm. yeah. becomes Christ and you have that that and then you, you know you sampled a movie called Home Alone 2 and, and so like I just felt like that 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 tension between you know the innocence that you feel and even even your lyrics are kind of like you know they have a kind of like childlike like feeling to them in a good way 
where you're talking about you just want your family together for Christmas. Like there's a youthful urgency and pleading, and, and then and then you have the realities of war. And so between those two extremes, like you find like like some emotional power, I think. So I think that's that's I mean as a person who enjoys different types of art, like I think that that was good art in that way. Thanks. That's a, an amazing um, a, approach. I dream that more more people can look that deep into the music. I agree. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, and, and I don't think that it's yeah. uh, too complicated to take that away from it. You know, not taken away from Joel's compliment, but I mean, I think it's just so powerful and, and, and so well done. So, how are you feeling now that that that, that project is is done? That that you know, Nappy Holidays. You know, you've got how many how many songs on the entire album actually? Uh, just eight songs. Um, Not just yeah. eight. I mean, there was probably about fifteen. Yeah, there's about fifteen. Um, if you notice, though, the title is actually "Nappy Holidays Volume One," so you can expect um, uh, a new edition every year. There's the teaser. That's awesome, Mike. Um, so, so yep. Volume One is done. How many hours would you say went into, um, you know, the whole album itself? Uh, five weeks. Uh, no less than. 40 hour weeks for five weeks. Um, uh, I don't know. There were some days I worked 47 hours straight, literally. Yeah. With nothing more than I work at Starbucks in the morning, so all I had was just coffee. But <laughs> uh, 47 hours. Yeah. Um, I'm really. Uh, I'm. I'm so bad with math. What's 40 times five? Uh, 900? No, I don't know. I can't <laughs> do math. Ladies and gentlemen. 200. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least 200 hours in five weeks. Wow. Um, at least. At least. Well, so, you know, um, it shows. It pays but yeah, off. So we'll, yeah, and um, what to expect next. February 1st, we have another project coming out called Black History. So we're rocking and rolling. Finally, we're on a, we're on a consistent streak of releasing music. Um, but as far as this one goes, um, I can't thank you guys enough for having me on here to promote this song. Um, I feel honored to work with veterans that trust me to capture their words and you know attempt to get them to the world. Uh, it's quite an honor. Yeah, Mike, and you did, and you did a, such a great job uh, doing it. Like I said, I was honored to be uh, to be a part of that project. So. Um, just to recap, then you've got something coming up February first. Any uh, want to give any more insight onto what uh, Black History is all about? That's the name of your project, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my partner Tamara Sadiq. Uh, it'll be his first um, project release, not uh, an album, but a project release similar to how this was like a project release album mm -hmm. type thing concept. Um, it'll be called Black History. It released on February first, and um, Tamara Sadiq is my music partner. I've been working with him for seven years. He's been in the hip-hop culture since the 80s, started as a b-boy. He's even an MTV Philadelphia Scribble Jam champ, same competition at Eminem won. Um, and he's very smart, very educated, and this project's going to be authentic to music and, and really teach some amazing history that has been forgotten about in our country. Uh, so it's very exciting. Now, very is, he exciting. Be, is, is he's an MC? Mike. Yeah, he's an MC. Um, he's an so MC. I'll okay, co-produce cool. with. Yes. Yeah. Also, awesome. I'll co-produce with him, um, and we'll just. Yeah. Try not to rant too much. Uh, not, I want to make sure I get in my thank yous again. Yeah, uh, you you are. You're a, you know you're a very humble guy. I always tell you I think you're too humble sometimes, which is a good thing. But uh, you know this is this is your moment. This is you know a lot of hard work you had going on, and, and you know I know T works very hard with you. Um, you know, and, and I think your hard work's you know definitely paying off because we have this beautiful project. Now you also are involved. You well, the, you know, the owner, founder, producer of uh, of Nappy Beats, correct? Yeah, Nappy Beats. Um, I uh, have been making beats for over a decade, um, and actually, it was our dad who met legendary New York City producer Domingo, um, who has gold records with KRS One and Big Pun, and um, Domingo, on the strength of our dad, gave me a chance, and um, he guided me in the right direction and really guided me how to make some really good, authentic beats, and it has taught me uh, how, to, how to produce with artists and make good music. Um, so, so, so from Nappy, that... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask a question about Nappy Beats real quick. 
Oh, that's okay. I was just going to say from that now I also have a, an, a beat store available on the same website, nappymusic.com. Uh, I also make custom beats as well as composed music, you know, with full instruments as well. Now, do you play a lot of those instruments? Yeah, uh, I started piano lessons when I was three, so I play piano, saxophone, bass, guitar, vocals, um, you know, synthesizer, drum machine, percussion. Uh, I've learned as a music producer, you you have to get familiar with many instruments and um, learn them at least to the extent of where you can perform them on a song that you create, because sometimes and, you don't have anyone else. And I've got to say that growing up, my house was very loud and musical as Michael was constantly practicing and playing music. And we used to joke saying that he was going to be that one-man band on the street with like the bass drum strapped to him with the cymbals tied to his knees. The and I am. And you are, but I mean, look at your producing. You know, you're, you're nothing to be laughed at at all with everything that you're doing. And I also well, got to give a, you know, the credit to you real quick for our intro music. You know, that's a project that you and I worked on. Uh, oh, yeah. you, know, you helped me to, to produce that one and look how that's, how that's living on. So, uh, you know, and yeah, that, some awesome stuff in your studio. I definitely enjoy. Um, I I I have a much easier time taking pride when I work with people and they enjoy the product that we create. Um, and for example, like your intro. Yeah, I I I take I have worked really hard to learn how to capture other people's visions. Um, and this nappy holidays was the first example of many productions to come on my on my wall in the studio I'm looking out now a magic marker it says 500 songs and we wrote that about seven years ago and we probably have close to that so it's very exciting for us right now yeah you guys are, are constantly cranking out stuff so that's that's great stuff Michael I'm, uh, I'm really happy for you and, and proud of you and we're coming up uh, towards the end of our show, but how can how can people reach you again? Why don't you give us your website and any other contact information you you know you, you want your listeners to have your followers? Uh, everything can be found on nappymusic.com. There's quick links to the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook. My Instagram is nappy music. I love my Instagram. That's where I'm a sucker for social media. Um, and uh, be prepared for the name Tamara Sadiq. Where we, the other studio that we're partners with, they are called the Master Faders, and together we are really starting an empire here in Westchester. Shout out to McKinley Burrell, who wrote the press release and is also a part of our band. And um, most importantly, Joel and Dennis, thanks for having me on here. Um, thanks for letting me rant about myself. It is an honor. Uh, I appreciate anyone who is seeking truth, spreading truth, and doing good for other people. And as you guys say, making a change. You know, right now, small changes make the massive difference. I just paraphrased it, but well said. Thank you. And yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I, there might be one or two more plugs. I may be wrong. But don't you have uh, some projects where you did some music in the background for a couple things coming up? Did you, did you want to plug them? Or are they not released yet? That info not released yet. Oh yeah, um, um, I have my song about our father, Dennis Snappy, rest in peace. It's going to be in Bam Margera's new movie called I Needed Time to Stay Useless. I actually didn't understand that title until my dad died and I needed some time to stay useless. Nice. <laughs> so Perfect. um it's going to be a good movie. He's releasing a book this Christmas. Uh I needed I needed time to stay useless to promote the movie uh to TBA with a release date. And also uh, Tamara and I have a song that will be getting premiered in the Black Film Festival in San Diego in February called the Hamilton Chronicles getting produced by NBA legend and Coatesville man of the of the t uh, Mike your plug your plug broke out on the last the, the name of that uh, the Rip Hamilton okay is that and it will also be getting premiered in North Carolina in January, and that movie. You're good, Mike. You're good. Okay. Um, so Sky Hamilton is producing another film we're doing called The Hamilton Project, and by uh, we're doing, I mean we're contributing a song to the soundtrack, and that is getting premiered in L.A. and North Carolina over the winter. Wow. So uh, Sky Dennis and and um, Rip Hamilton. So it is uh, a very exciting exciting time right now. Your catch there was some microphone things that screwed up what I was saying, but um, pretty much just stay tuned at nappymusic.com and the one thing I want to get 
clear service to change. You guys are really doing a great part, and I thank you for letting me come on and talk. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. We're, we're uh, coming close to the end of our show. A lot of great plugs, a lot of great things going on for you, Michael, despite the uh, some of the technical difficulties we tend to have sometimes. Joel, let me turn it over to you real quick. Got about a minute for any uh, final thoughts or final words that you have, buddy. I just think music can uh, reach people where words sometimes can't. So I, I like I like the the fact that they're going to be doing something that's like uh, more historical about Black history, and I'm excited to hear about that. I think I think there's a lot of uh, more opportunities to be educated through music these days, and um, so I'm excited and I'm honored that that your brother came on the show. Good stuff, Joel. I, I couldn't agree more. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna move to wrap up the show right now. I want to give a quick shout out in case he's listening to my boy Nas. Uh, you know, I I, uh, I I taught him back in the day in Coatesville, and uh, there's a good chance he might be listening. So I, I hope you're doing well. Uh, definitely drop me an email if you get the chance. And uh, to all our listeners out there, um, again, thank you for your continued support. Please support the show. Please share our links, share our articles, You know, share this ChangeCast. There's many ways you can get it. You can get it at serviceofchange.com. Click on the ChangeCast links. They're right there. You can also get it through an RSS feed if you have a podcast player on your Android. You can get it on iTunes. Just search Service of Change. That's probably one of your easiest ways to get it. And you can also get You know, as I highly encourage you to get the Service of Change app. Just go to servicechange.com, dot com, not com. Click the top, and uh, you know they'll bring you up in your mobile device to the app screen, and just save that to your home screen. It creates the icon right there on your on your uh, mobile device, and you'll have it right there. And you open it up, you have access to our articles, any upcoming events that we may have, uh, you know, and definitely all of our podcasts. And you can stream them right there, and also on the website servicechange.com, you can stream all of our podcasts uh, right from the website, or you can download them yourself and save them, you know, wherever you want to save them, share them, whatever, anything that you can do helps us out. Like I said, small changes among the masses have those massive impacts. So please. Help us out and share it. And also, if you want to support the show, uh, my books, there should be links if you're watching a live broadcast on the right-hand side of your screen, but my books are available at servicechain.com and on amazon.com. I have uh, two books on teaching, one on uh, classroom management, and the other one is on uh, how to prepare for school violence, and the other one is Service of Soldier Journey, Counterintelligence, Law Enforcement, and the Violence of Urban Education, and that's uh, my memoir from uh, military to police work to uh, Philadelphia school. So please check those books out. Great Christmas ideas for uh, for people, you know, if you want to get a, a gift for somebody, and we definitely support the show as well, so I'd greatly appreciate it. So again, uh, facebook.com slash service change. Follow me on Twitter, Dennis Nappy the second N A P P I I I. I hate giving all these plugs at the end of the show, but that's what I have to do. But that's the end of our show. Again, a big thank you to Michael Nappy and all the great things that you have going for you, Joel. It's a pleasure to have you here as my uh, my co-host. And remember to all you listeners out there, we are so grateful for, for you and for everything that you do for us. Uh, you know, Again, please continue to tune in. And remember that small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. Be that change. Thank you. <laughs>